talked to some other experts who say we need submarines, we need sea-based uh, abilities. What's your take on uh, on the budget and, and what the Navy of the future is going to look like? Well, well certainly, uh, you know, the budget uh, supports the president's strategy as well as the Department of Defense strategy. And as you know, we're continuing a focus on the Middle East uh, as well as uh, a focus on the Asia-Pacific region. And so while we're certainly going to have a smaller, leaner force, uh, we'll have the force uh, to be able to do the mission that's required. And as far as uh, what this means for the Navy, well, you know, the, the United States, we're a maritime nation. And since 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water and 80% of the world's population lives near the sea and 90% of all world trade by volume travels over the sea, what happens on the sea matters. Uh, it matters to our uh, jobs here in Texas. It matters to our national economy, and it matters to world peace. And so uh, that's where your Navy comes in. Uh, your Navy is going to be the nation's front line in war and in peace, uh, operating on the sea, above the sea, and below the sea uh, with our ships, aircraft, and submarines. Okay. So uh, a very big role for the Navy. Uh, Secretary Panetta and the president have talked about a one-theater war stance as opposed to the World War II days of the two-theater stance. Uh, can we uh, keep an eye on the other end of things if we're focused on a one-theater approach? Uh, we absolutely can. And uh, uh, that's the goal of this is to be able to uh, sustain a one-theater campaign but also surge as we're needed to, uh, to other places. And so we can absolutely meet those missions. The Strait of Hormuz has made a lot of news recently, and the Navy is mentioned, obviously, very often about that. Uh, what would it take for the Iranians or for anyone to shut down the Strait of Hormuz, and what would it take for us and the West to reopen it? Well, certainly the Strait of Hormuz, it's, it's one of the uh, strategic maritime choke points in the entire world. Uh, about 30% of the world's oil passes through the Strait of Hormuz, and on a daily basis, uh, about 10 super tankers, you know, 17 to 20 million barrels of oil a day. Uh, so it's a very uh, key passage uh, for the world's shipping. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, Iran is a threat. Uh, they've increased their maritime presence. Uh, they have submarines. Uh, they have a mine capability. Uh, they have coastal defense cruise missiles. Uh and, and so, so certainly, uh, you know, they've said that they'll uh, disrupt shipping and potentially close down the Strait of Hormuz uh, if their oil exports are stopped or if their uh, nuclear plants are attacked. Uh, what does it take for us to prevent that from happening? I think it goes into the communications part. Uh, you know, we have let them know that there are certain red lines that uh, if they're crossed, uh, we will take action. And so first off, I think they have to know, uh, you know, uh, what they're up against. And second of all, uh, the Navy, uh, we're ready. One of our uh, tenants is to be ready. And we have, uh, we're in the process of uh, increasing our minesweeping presence. We're shipping over four additional minesweepers to the Persian Gulf region. And additionally, uh, we're shipping over four uh, helicopter mine countermeasures, uh, helicopters, excuse me, and... Uh, so we will be ready uh, in case, uh, you know, mines start showing up. And, and we obviously monitor uh, the activities in the Gulf very closely. Uh, so the bottom line is, uh, you know, if something happens, that's what your Navy is there for. Uh, you know, the, we like to think of a, a good analogy as the Navy is America's away team. Uh, <laughs> because we're fast, flexible, and forward deployed around the world, uh, we're able to protect the nation's interests and uh, the American way of life. All right, now looking at your visit here, you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for the next couple of days. You're going to be meeting with all kinds of folks on the government level, civic level, corporate level. What's the message you're bringing and that you want people to hear? Because here we are in a very land-based Dallas-Fort Worth, and you're talking about the Navy. Well, exactly. And, and frankly, the message uh, I want to convey is I want to tell people how the Navy protects America, and I want to show the residents of the Metroplex the tremendous investment they have in the Navy. And, uh, yeah, even though we are in the middle of the country, uh, you know, we are a maritime nation. And uh, what happens on the sea matters. And, and that's really what I want to convey. And I want to convey uh, how the Navy uh, protects our national interests and the fact that, you know, we're on watch 24-7, 365 around the world. So you may not hear about us all the time, uh, 
uh, but but we're out there doing our job uh, in a forward deployed uh, status. I have to ask you on a lighter note, uh, what's your call sign? My call sign is tree, is as tree. in what, what grows in the forest. <laughs> and and, and when the, the USS Enterprise is about to go away, but the fuzzy dice from the Top Gun film crew still <laughs> hanging from the bridge as it goes off on its last mission. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and <laughs> Top Gun, for a lot of people, is Navy is naval aviation. How close was it <laughs> to reality? Well, you know, I, I went through Top Gun about a year after the movie was made. Oh, okay. And, I did, and so uh, it was a great time. Uh, you know, I like to say, I tell people that fighter pilots really don't sing of bars. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, or at least and, not you know, well. <laughs> at least not well. And, and the aviation scenes, uh, you know, they were good. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of times the planes, frankly, were flying closer together than you would normally. Right. But once again, that's that's to get them in, yeah. into the into the scene there. Sure. But the uh, but the spirit of the movie, in terms of the training uh, that people uh, go through when they attend Top Gun, uh, that, that's a true statement. You're getting a graduate level degree in uh, both air to air and now air to ground tactics, and they teach you not only how to fly the plane and how to fight the plane, but how the, how your systems work, how your weapons work. Uh, it's a 10-week course nowadays. When I went, it was five weeks. And so it's very involved. And when those people graduate, they're essentially the squadron experts in uh, air-to-air and air-to-ground tactics. And, and we rely on our Top Gun graduates to teach those tactics to the people in their squadrons, and, and to, up to including their, their commanding officers. So, so it's a huge amount of responsibility we place in them. It's a lot of work, a lot of study. Uh, but for me... Uh, it was it was the best five weeks of, of my flying career, for sure. Rear Admiral Sadler, thank you very much. It's nice to know you have our six. Well, thank you very much for having me, and, uh, and uh, I appreciate your time. Have a great day, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.